morning. Um, and now on to plant adaptations. So in a way, very similar to animals, all about compete competition, all about being the absolute best they can be so they can survive. And there's some real common ones. So in terms of protecting yourself against predators, we've got many adaptations of different plants to make themselves unattractive. And here's one we all know, the typical nettle. We've all been stung as we walk along, etc. Imagine trying to eat that. So deliberately stinging parts of the plant, deliberately tasting horrible. Um, unfortunately, some animals have adapted to not be stung by the nettles and actually not be affected by them. But it's a constant battle between the plant trying to protect itself and, for example, the animal trying to eat it as its food source. Um, even more obvious example, thorns. Lots of plants having thorns, again, to try and stop the animals from grazing on them. Um, again, we've all been pricked by them. Different type of adaptation by plants. Wouldn't, you wouldn't look at it, you just go, oh, it's just a flower. But actually, why do plants have flowers? It's an adaptation for reproduction. They're trying to attract insects so they can carry the pollen between one plant and another. So loads of flowers, different shapes, etc., different smells, different colours to attract different insects. And the competition is whoever can attract the most insects can spread more of their pollen around. Therefore, they reproduce more. Different type of competition would be competition for light. Now, a lot of plants and trees will grow really quick and try and get tall as fast as possible. The taller you are, the more you can get the light from the other uh, plants around you. But the example here in the photo, the bluebell, bluebells grow on, grow on the forest floor. So on the forest floor, there isn't much light. Therefore, bluebells usually come out in about February. They go, they grow much earlier in the year than other plants because what they're doing is they're growing and reproducing and getting all the light before the trees have got the leaves on them. So they've adapted to live in the colder climate and they come out earlier in the year, even when there's frosts around, they're not affected by them. And in sort of an opposite way, rather than living in a colder place, um, cactuses. Whew. Very hot here in Arizona. Quite hard getting here as well during lockdown, but worth it for the lesson. So cactuses, um, as you'll see, my friend here, Kurt the cactus. Um, how's he well adapted to where he lives? Well, firstly, by being thick like this, they have a like the animals, that means on the outside, unlike leaves, they have a really small surface area. So they're not much area to lose water. Over. And that area is protected by a thick layer of waxy cuticle. So that thick wax means water can't get through it so they hold on to the water they have got and again by having this great big area this succulent part of a plant and they're called succulents they store water for an awful long time that means they don't need to get water very often they can hold on to the water they've got now their leaves are not flat their leaves are curled into a spine and by being curled into a spine they've got a very small surface area again it means cactuses grow slowly from photosynthesis but it also means they don't lose much water. The added advantage of having these spines on them is make, it makes them not very attractive for animals to eat because obviously they'll get prickles in their tongues, etc. Then underground, what tends to happen is cactuses have a, a really wide root system going out for meters on each side so that when it does rain, they can collect loads and loads of water. So they'll collect as much as possible whenever they get the chance. And then as well as that, they can have great big long roots going down. And the great big long roots mean they can get the water from deeper down where it's not so dry for quite a while after it rains because only the water on the surface dries out and evaporates. Hopefully that will help. So from this slide you might want to pause it it might help you just to write a few notes about cactuses and being adapted to living in really dry conditions you've got the waxy layer on there you've got the really long roots the widespread roots and then actually this idea that 
you can have wide organs, such as over here on the third picture, where you can actually store water in tubers underground or store water in the really thick stems. So pause, please, and make a note of any of that adaptations for plants that live in really dry conditions. OK, three questions. Uh, quite easy. Looking at what we've just done with slides before, how do plants protect against animals? So the nettles was a good one, etc. How do plants ensure they get enough light? So think about trees and plants growing in a forest. Um, how do plants adapt to get water? How do they make sure they get water even when there's not much around? And then what I'd like you to do just for a minute, I have a think, how would these adaptations help? So stomata, if you, do, if you remember from when we did plants before and organization, stomata are those little holes on the leaves that allow carbon dioxide to come in, oxygen to leave, but it's also where plants lose water. So how would those five things, and just have a think, you don't have to do anything, just pause it here for a second. And then see if your answer match up. So that first one I'll just go through. Having less stomata on your leaves, less holes in the leaf means you lose less water by transpiration. What plants would like to do that? The example there, the cactus, and then there's just a picture at the end of the stomata. So it might be worth writing down, if you haven't already got this in the adaptations bit, and when you wrote down the desert bit, just make a little few notes about that. And then just to finish off on plant adaptations, there are loads of them. So I've gone for the really obvious cactus one, which is quite a common one, but it can be applied to all the sort of plants that live in desert conditions. But the Venus flytrap pictured here, this is an adaptation to a plant that lives in quite swampy ground, but where the ground doesn't have many nutrients in it. So there's not much in the ground to actually, for the nutrients, the vitamins and minerals section, where you can actually get them out of the soil. So the Venus flytrap adapted to catch little insects and then they trap them and break them down. They don't feed off them so much because they're feeding from sunlight, but they get their nutrients from the flies. From the little bugs so what i'd like you to do last thing nice little drawing and some labels try and be as original as possible find one more find one more plant adaptation something that you've never known before a little search on the internet should be easy enough to do find something that I think it's actually quite strange a really weird flower strange thorns one adaptation that and then what i'll do is we'll try and share some of these in another lesson.